to give us the word, give us the truth. Because he give us what God give him. Like I said, ain't about money, it ain't about fame. And like he always said, if it ain't nobody but me and him, he gonna preach. He's a straight shooter. And my friend, with no further ado, Pastor Bland. <laughs> appreciate God for each and every one of you. Christ died for people. God, he so loved the world. And the world means that he didn't die for the good person. He didn't die for the tithe payer. He did not die for the person who been married to the same person all the time. All the stuff that we get up and brag about it don't mean nothing to God. And so I'm just thanking God today for a little walking around since I do. Now, Mother, if you have to sit back there, that's fine, but I'm not used to you being way back there. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, if you have to sit back there, I understand. Uh, get your Bibles, and let's turn, if you will, to Leviticus. I believe it's uh, the 11th chapter. Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Leviticus 11. No, it's the 17th chapter. I had to go look it up. I had mixed up. 17th chapter. Uh, what we want to talk about tonight, and what I guess we always will, it's one thing to have a Bible, and it's another thing to understand it. Everybody got a Bible, but out, out of that Bible, Gene, they're coming out with all kind of foolishness. All kind of foolishness. The only problem that man has ever had is, is because he's trying to do something. Uh, man does not get in right relationship with God because of anything that he does. Uh, the Bible says, give me Genesis 15, and, and don't, let, don't let me forget the uh, Levit Leviticus, what did I say, 17? Okay. Uh, Genesis 15. Um, the only problem he's ever had is, is him trying to do something. When they are in the garden, I always go back to the garden because that's Genesis 3, because cricket, it seems like that in the garden there was no problem until uh, Adam was persuaded to try to do something to help himself. Uh, as long as he threw himself and abandoned himself upon God. Do, he, did you learn that? Did you learn that you didn't get any help until you abandoned yourself to God? You, you, you see, you can't hold back. Uh, they used to use a term which used to scare me in church. They said, you need to sell out. That, that, that just scared me. You know, you need to just, get, just sell out to God. I want to hold some for myself. It was not, Mother Nun, until I came to the realization that what I was holding on to wasn't doing me any good. It's kind of like when I was working at Coca-Cola and I didn't want to go to treatment, I didn't want to get any help for my cocaine addiction until it finally came through, through to me, Kathy, they said, yeah, you working and you're getting a check, but it ain't doing you no good every week because you're going and spending it. It's not doing you any good. And so when I realized, I have to get to the place, Mother, Mother Bland, like Paul, Romans the seventh chapter, the Bible is so good when we believe it. And Paul says in Romans the seventh chapter, he says, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, and the flesh simply means in my ability to come up with solutions. Are, are, are. Have you ever done that? Well, you really had a problem. You sat up all night trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. How I'm going to make this child act right. How, how, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to do that? But, but Paul says that in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I got Bible on it. Jesus came right back in the Gospels and Jesus says, said the flesh profiteth nothing, but it is the spirit which quickeneth or uh, brings to life. You see, God has always wanted to give us life. There's more to life than just eating and drinking and going to work. There's, there's more to, to, to life. Jesus said that the thief cometh but and the thief is the one the way he got tricked was was that he wanted to be God 
He said, I'm going to ascend my throne. I'm going to be like God. It's in Isaiah. And, and the writer said, they saw him fall like lightning. You see, God is not going to have any other God beside him. And that's one reason I know that it's not God when it gets too complicated. When you get to talking and I don't understand it, that's you. Because God, the Bible says about Jesus, I got Bible on, he said the common people heard him gladly. It was the religious folks. It was these theological scholars that just scratched their head, you see. But he talked to them in simple terms. He talked to them uh, about planting seeds, and some seeds fell on the wayside, and, and they, they could not see what he was talking about. So Paul says, I know that is in me dwelleth no good thing. So then I no longer look, Madeline, within me or within my thoughts or within uh, my emotions. You see, the soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And our soul is corrupted because it is ruled by uh, this world and by, by us. We became spiritually dead. We became spiritually dead when man took up his own way. And that's, that's why that we don't do much over here. You notice how most churches got this going on, got that going on, and whatever. We don't, we don't do much. I had a wonderful lady call me today, and she said that I'm from such and such and such and such, and we have prayer ministries, and uh, we were just wondering if you wanted, we want the local pastor to join in. Maybe you will host a day and everything, and, and it's at 5 o'clock in the morning. I said, oh, no, I'm going to be sleeping at 5 o'clock. I said, I'm going to be asleep at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it, it sounds humorous, but, 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 but you see, it is born out of a sincere desire. It is born out of a sincere desire that I want to do something to please God. I want God to be happy with me. But you see, Paul says, I know that in me. Ain't nothing I can do to please God. God, he, he, the only thing that pleased God was his son. And if I'm in his son, then I am accepted in the beloved. And so when Eve decided that she was going to help God, Deborah, she didn't need nothing. It's so easy to become weary in well-doing. You're doing good. And sometimes you don't, you know, my pastor said, 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 said he used to say, you don't miss your water till your well run dry. And he said, you don't miss your baby till she said bye-bye. You, you see, so it's so, and that's the reason that to me these settings are so important because the Spirit of God will always lead me to the right place. I have to quit wanting what I want and I have to tell God, say, God, you have your way. Because now I, I ain't by myself. I, I don't make some decisions, Cricket, that I sure wish I hadn't. But at the time, it sure made sense to me. But the Spirit of God will always lead you to a place that you won't regret. Now, it may be the harder path, but, but, but you won't regret it. So Eve messed up when she said, Satan, Satan tempted her with her being involved. God know that in that day, you're going to be able, you won't be such a burden on God. You'll be able to make your own decisions. You'll know this and, and, and you'll know that. And, and so from that, Man became spiritually dead. You see, Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You, don't, you, ain't never, you didn't hear nothing in the first three chapters about blood. You didn't hear nothing in the first three chapters about death. You didn't hear nothing in the first three chapters about trouble. It was only when man tried to put his hand in it that his existence became what, what, we, what we suffer through now. Okay? And so, in Ephesians, oh, okay, I got you in Genesis 15. Look what the Bible says here. God takes Abraham, and he uses Abraham as an example, a uh, representative. And he said, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You see, Mother Nun, somewhere down the line, you've got to trust that God know what he's doing. And, and then, when you get real smart, when you get real smart, Sheila, when you're going to realize you don't know. You don't know. You see, Christianity is going to take a whole lot of folk to hell. Because you, people are secure in their Christianity. 
they think that a Christian, we, we have come up with uh, Farrah a laundry list of who a Christian is. You're a Christian by the kind of clothes you wear. She knows she ain't. Honey, I know she ain't calling her. So who, who church she go to? She wearing them right there. Oh, what? And look at her hair. Uh uh. No. Uh uh. And then your, your political viewpoints. You see, all, all, all of these Republican folks that are supposed to be uh, with God and everything, but I think they kind of showed their hand when they, when they started back in Trump and said, Y'all ain't Christian, you just racist. That's all it is. It, that's what I, but you know, we got to be against, you got to be against uh, abortion. You got to be against same sex marriage and everything. That's how Bush got in that second time. All that fool, all them black preachers and everything, talking about something. He was, he was against same sex marriage, and you still, you got it anyway. <laughs> See, the, pr the problem is you're just ignorant. You're just ignorant. It ain't got nothing to do with being a Christian <laughs> or what y'all call a Christian. I'm, I'm a member of the body of Christ. You know, I, you get to be in the body of Christ, uh, Mother Davis, by believing. Look what happened to Abraham. The Bible says, and Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me seeing I go childless? You see, God had made him a promise that through, through his seed uh, that he was going to bless him, but he didn't have a child. And you see, that's what confuses us about God is God will make a promise and ain't nothing there. But what we fail to realize is, Sherbert, God don't need nothing in order for there to be something. Oh, I got, I, I might not have a Bible, I got life on it. You ain't had nothing to offer God. What you had to offer God was a shame. What you brought to him was a shame. And look what he did with it. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm childless. All I got in my house is Eliezer, this servant. Abraham said, Abram said, behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, no one born in my house is mine heir. God told me today, Shonda, he told me, he said, you, you may be a victim. All of us have been victims. You may be a victim, but you cannot afford to have a victim mentality. You see, when you have a victim mentality, you run around feeling sorry for yourself, and that's your whole conversation about what happened to you. And instead of glorifying God, you glorifying the circumstances of what you're going through. He says, uh, this shall not be thine heir. What I, that ain't what, I, what I promise you, I know what I promise you. And I know you don't see nothing yet. But you've got to trust and lean upon my word. He told Jeremiah, he said, I'll watch over my word. Jeremiah was catching hell from every which way he went. Jeremiah was speaking, but didn't nobody believe him. But God had to tell Jeremiah, I said, I'll watch over my, let me tell you something. Except God watch the house, the watchman watch in vain. Somewhere down the line, you need to stake your claim on God. You, 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 you depending on your job, you depending upon your folk, you depending upon your friends, and every one of them going to let you down. But I promise you, I'll stand it, until I die, I'll say, okay, you can't beat God. That God ain't letting nobody down. He says in verse 5, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Look what verse 6 says. And he believed in the Lord and he, and he counted it to him. Uh, some theologians say, Sheriff Bird, that that is the same thing as if uh, someone goes and makes a deposit into your bank account. It's there. You were broke, but they went and put $5 million in your account. Now you are a millionaire. Okay? Man is broke when it comes to righteousness. But God only asks that you believe him, and when you believe him, then he imputes or gives you his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. Give me that real quick. You know, people are talking about, well, folk don't go to church because all the preachers ain't right. People don't go to church because all they do is ask for money. People don't come to church because this reason. No, you don't come to church because you just like Adam. When God went looking for him, and he said, where are thou at? He said, well, I was naked, and so I hid myself from him. Unless you are clothed with God's righteousness, you can't make it out here. Because it ain't now one of y'all living right every day. It's a crying shame, some of the stuff you're doing. And me too. 
Okay? All right? And so if you count on yourself, then you're going to get shame and you're going to run, you're going to hide, you don't want nobody to see you and whatever. You know, like some of you women now, but I see you, you don't got over it now. I didn't come to church because my hair wasn't thick. But, but we'll put a hat on that one with Kathy. Thank you, Jesus. Well, come on. Well, come on. Yeah. But self, self will keep me. Because instead of being Christ conscious, I got to keep looking at him because when I look at me, I'm always going to see some flaws. When I look at me, I'm always going to be messed up. But when I quit looking to me, when I just, I'll admit, ain't nothing good in me. But when I behold him, you see, the Bible says that God is spirit. The Bible says a spirit, but the correct translation is spirit. God is spirit, and they that worship him, uh, they that know him, uh, they that become intimate with him, they become intimate through, through the spirit and through truth. You see, my mind is never going to lead me to God. My mind is going to lead me away from God. But the spirit of God, will lead me. That's right. I don't never worry about no altar calls and trying to persuade folks and bringing in this person and that person to, in order from that. Why, why should I try to take the Holy Ghost place? The Spirit of God is what brought me in. I don't know what brought nobody else in. And if, you know, where well, we got to we got to appeal to the young folks and we got to appeal to the thing. Look, if you gonna make it like the club, I just let me go to the club. They know how to do it better than y'all do. No, they, uh, look what, go, go up just a little bit, Tara. Back to, back to 17. Uh, the Bible says here, therefore, if any man be in Christ, you see, the only hope, the only life is in God. The life is in God. Now, when we fail away from God, then, uh, I'm at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Take me back to Leviticus 17, I think, 17 and 11. This is what happened when we fell away from God. Man, God, man was, was body, soul, and spirit. You there? Leviticus 17 and 11. You with me? Here the Bible says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. If you ain't got no blood in you, you're not alive. You dead. You lose enough blood, you gone. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. Now, we learned in some prior lessons that the atonement is simply a covering. The, the atonement does not take away, but it covers it. And so it was covering it until the right blood came along, which Hebrews tells us was when he, Christ Jesus, took his blood into the real holy of holies in heaven, then he put away sin and he perfected and sanctified us forever. And you see, by us not having an understanding and not being taught right, we thinking that we just have a temporary uh, postponement of our sins, and that's the reason people do this foolishness, talking about, Lord, forgive me. Now, if you mess up again, Lord, forgive me. Because I don't feel like telling them today. I tell them this. I just let them, I save up by four or five. Then, Lord, forgive me. It was an atonement. It was simply it was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats would take it away. It could not take it away, but it covered it. It covered it because God can't stand sin. And so then he gave that in order to move it out of his face so that he could deal with, uh, with us, deal with the nation of Israel as a nation of priests. And so it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Remember tonight that we're talking about life. Life is the most precious thing that you have. Life. And so he says, I give you the blood. You see, the spirit was causing them to be animated, causing them to move or whatever. Uh, but when, I said 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, uh, take me to uh, Ephesians, the first chapter. Ephesians, uh, second chapter. Give me Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. I haven't preached a message and I have not taught a Bible study that I know of. God does. Did I say second? I say Ephesians 2. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 
See what it says in the first chapter. Go, go back up a little bit. See how did we get there. Go on down. Well, here Paul says in the third verse, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he has chosen us in him, in who? In Christ Jesus, before the foundation of the world. Now, you see, in order for you to think that God deals with me according to how I act, then you must disregard totally what you know about love. You see, some of these little babies ain't pretty, but y'all, he pretty to you. And when he get here, you just say, mm -hmm, my, my baby, my baby, yeah. And the thing about it, uh, Sheriff Bird, you love the baby before he got here. Uh, Tasha was talking about the other day, she's talking about, I, 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 I talked to the baby before she ever got here. Nah, I ain't going that far, but he said, I talked to the baby before the baby ever, you love that baby. And when that baby get here, that baby ain't got to get no job. The baby ain't got to provide nothing to you. The baby don't speak to you. The baby don't do nothing, but you just love that baby. You see, love is not based upon what you do. There's folks that'll turn flips for you and everything. You don't care nothing about them. And somebody else that all ain't, ain't more angry right for nothing, you just love, just love them. And that's, that's what love is. And so the love of God, before we ever got here, before the foundation of the world, God loved us. Uh, and and that he, he preordained that he was going to fix us up and that we'd be holy and without blame before God in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now this seems very simple, but people don't know this. People think that they got to do something in order for the life of God to be within them, but God has provided every good and perfect gift come from him. God has fixed us up, but you have to believe it. You don't get it. I'm going to tell you, it's, there's power in what you believe. There's power in what you believe. There's power in what you believe. And that's the reason that you have to guard your heart. Guard your heart. I try my best to be on my best, to do my best, so that I feel good about me. Because you have no kind of control over how people see you, what people say about you. Okay, let me tell you something. Most of us that are parents, we done had our children that are talk around, turn around and talk to us like we had a tale. It ain't just me. It ain't just me. Now, you talking about a hurting thing. Now, I ain't talking about my children. I'm talking about me. My mama coming up there to the Little Rock uh, family to come see about me. I done smoked up all my money and all that. Her and my dad, he just, she drug him along. He was, I don't want to see this Negro. But he, they, here they are, and they coming up there and saying, baby, this, 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 this. you know what I told them? I said, look, you need to take care of your house. I got this right here. You done driven, I don't know how many miles. You know, and Deborah, you, I got to get in y'all car to leave. Oh, Deborah said, you got to leave here. But I'm talking to you, you see. So you got to know who you are. You cannot depend. And that's the reason that is so, and especially you need to know who you are in Christ. Because this old religious world is set up to bring you up under condemnation and make you hide and to snuff the life of God out of you. He says, look what he says in verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, wherein he have abounded toward us. In other words, I don't have just a little bit of God's grace. In Romans, the fifth chapter, at the end of the chapter, he even goes on to say, where sin did abound, grace did abound much more. I can't sin so much that God's grace won't come. I'm covered by God's grace. Once that you... look. When you get ready to go somewhere or something, man, you might have some anxiety, you might have some fear, but if the right person tell you, you say, look here, go on in there, I got you. I got you. I ain't going to let you fall. I ain't going to let you fail. Then you quit depending upon yourself. There's no life in us. The life of God comes through our relationship with Christ. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the darkness comprehended it, not another word. The darkness could not put it out. Look, if Satan could have put you out, you wouldn't be here now. He says uh, in verse 9, having made known unto us, not through some preacher, 
The Holy Spirit let you know what you know now. The only thing you do, if, if I preach the word of God the way I'm supposed to, then your spirit will witness with the word. But I cannot, I cannot deposit something within you that's not within you. I can't put that within you. And you can't help lazy folks. People that will not read, you can't help them. You can't help them. You can, you try, you can try. You can try to carry them. He said, uh, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. You see, that's how love is. You see, when somebody loved you, it ain't about you. They have purposed. They have purposed within themselves what they're going to do for you. And that's how love works. Because you're going to give them a million reasons to walk off from you and leave you alone and don't fool with you. And that's the reason they make you look like a fool. Say, why is he still fooling? Because I love him. If you ever find somebody you love, you're going to be a fool too. You know? I tell Vanna Jr. Fair, I told Vanna Jr., I said, I don't love you like your mama loves you. Oh, daddy, oh, daddy, you love. I said, no, I don't either. I don't love you. I said, God don't give men the ability to love like women. Because I'm telling you what, she was the one that got all their homework out, did all those uh, 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 projects and all that. Should have put her name on that with them. Mm -hmm. No wonder when they turn around now and try to talk, try to smile talk. She don't get they grown. She'll smack them, slap them. I'm trying to tell you. And sometimes they be she be so far. This a grown man, man, 39 years old, be all in his bed in the cricket. Tell me, well, did you such and such way? You that's a Deborah. I said, get out that man in bed. He said, Savannah, I had it. I, I had this one right here. I said, well, yeah, you right. I ain't had now one of them. He says in verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together and warn all things in Christ, both in heaven, because heaven went in, remember heaven went in rebellion with, with Lucifer, and which are on earth, and Adam caused rebellion on earth even in him in whom also we obtained an inheritance. Take me over to uh, 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 ver uh, chapter 2. Let's run over there real quick. 632 already. Okay, chapter 2. Okay, and so he says, and you. So you got to know who you are. You got a new life in, in you. See, the flesh don't profit nothing. Quit, quit, quit trying to please God. Get out of the pleasing God being and say, God, have your way. God don't need your help. God, God don't need, see, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, I can't go to all these verses. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, said he has become our wisdom. You don't have to depend upon, your wisdom is devilish. Your wisdom is devilish. But the wisdom that comes from God is filtered through 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Where the, the Bible, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, he said, says, love keeps no record of the wrongs that's done to it. You see, the love of God is foreign to all kind of human thinking. Because we naturally, you kill my cat, I'm gonna kill your dog. We naturally is, I can show you better than I can tell you. We naturally want to look here, that you don't want none of this. This, this here, you don't want this right. Ooh, we feel good when we say that. You, you see? But that's the natural man. That's not real life. When you get through, you feel worse than you did before you started. But the life of God is the spirit of God. But Paul says here, you got to get in the right attitude in order for the spirit of God to lead you because to the natural man, the things of the spirit are foolishness. And so Paul said, I'd be a fool for Christ. You see, if you are led by the spirit of God, you got to be able to stand uh, looking like a fool. You got to be able to stand going against the grain. And I'm talking about even in church. I'll say again, you and me both are very fortunate that this church is here. We, we are. We are very fortunate. It's hard to do something by yourself. You trying to do, like, and you, everybody, you going to church, you going against the pastor, you going against the deacons, everybody, what you talking about is going against. You see? And so I don't know how long this is going, but as long as it's going on, I'm trying to get all that I can get that I can build myself up, uh, my inheritance among them which are sanctified. He says, 
he quickened you and you was dead in your trespasses and sin, wherein you walked in time past according to the course of this world. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I don't rob no banks. I don't do this. I had my own righteousness, Kathy. I felt like I wasn't no bomb. I ain't, I ain't no prostitute. I'm not, you know, drunk walking up and down the street. I had my own righteousness. I walked according to the course of this world. He said, uh, in verse 3, among also, no, go back up. I'm sorry. I missed the part there where it says, uh, uh, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That word in the Greek is apithia, which means the children, the children of unbelief. They will not believe God. You see, nobody's going to hell for sin because sin is in our members. Paul said, when I seek to do good, evil is present with me. Paul says in the seventh chapter, he said, I can say with my mind that the law is good. All of us want to live right. You know, sometimes. Sometimes all of us want to do right. Just get, just get sick of yourself. You see? He says, but I, I, I can sit with my mind that the law is right, but I find within my members, within me, something in my members, another law warring against me. So Paul says, no longer me, but it's sin that dwelleth within. Oh, wretched man, I am. who shall deliver me from the body of this? Th See, there is no hope but Jesus Christ. And that's the reason that we're not taught about Christ. What we're taught about is what we need to do. The whole focus is on what we need to do. I'm getting ready to ordain you a deacon. And these are the duties of a deacon. And I want you to do this and do that and everything. And so you come up and put on a suit and you sit up there in a special seat and everything. You ain't done nothing. You ain't done nothing to help yourself. All you've done is built up that foolishness that's in your heart and making you think that it's a difference between you and other people. Yeah. In which you really, is, there is no. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I have to get a knowledge of the work of, of the cross. I have to get a knowledge of what God did on my behalf. What God did on my behalf. Now, watch this. What he did on my behalf is not manifesting in my life. And so my natural mind tells me that that's just a fairy tale that he's got written down there. Because I don't see holiness. I don't see sanctification. I don't see wisdom in my life. But you see... There's something magical that happens when you believe something. When you believe something. You can have folks that come out of the same house and one believes something and the other believes something and they're going to end up at two different places. And the reason you ended up there was because you believed. Oh, you know it was folks in the, you, it, you wasn't the only somebody that was in that mud puddle, but you got up out of it. Because it was some within you said, I may be in this mud puddle, but this is not my destination. God did not, God didn't, God didn't raise me. God did not bring me here in order for this to be my destination. And you believe something else. He says uh, in verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy. You see, when I began to understand the very character of God, <laughs> that God does not give me what I deserve. I thought it was a very good thing for the church on Sunday when and let me say this the funeral will be here Sunday for Edward Glass it will not be at Saturday I'm sorry thank you at one o'clock thank you baby the funeral will be here I thought it was a very good thing for the church to be gracious just because you used to go here and you don't go here no more by justice, well, you know you left. But mercy. And grace. Which encompasses love. Said, don't make no difference what you did. We still the same. We still love you just as much as if you had been here every Sunday. As if you had. You see? That is when the spirit of God is leading you. But when our mind is leading us. And we can't do that on our own. We don't do that on our own. Y'all, they don't where they do that at. The other churches ain't doing that. If you ain't, no. Mm -mm. Y'all can come have it, but it's, it's going to be $300. You, you're going to pay. And that's even for folks that come every Sunday. <laughs> Ooh. 
The Bible says, <laughs> and that can only come. They don't come through no man. And please don't, please don't think I'm saying that came from me. Uh, that comes from the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God is leading you, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Everybody's life is better. Every, everybody is free. Every, every, everybody, everybody is blessed. Look what he says in verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. He accounts me as having done what Christ did. And that is, died for my sins. So then he, he, he it, it's just like if uh, you, both, me and Gene both, Oh, for our houses. We owe, uh, oh my God, these people with these student loans. Uh, I was talking to a woman the other day. She's an optometrist and everything. I said, well, you got that money? She said, she said, she said Mr. Bland, she said, I owe $390,000 in, 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 in student loans. She said, I was, I was paying $3,000 a month in student loans. No wonder them folks felt so good at Morehouse when that man said, I'm paying everybody. Ooh, they, oh God, they couldn't have held me. I would have been, oh Jesus, I'd have ran. He done took his payment. I said, I'm not paying yours. You act too big a fool up in here. And if it had been my child, I know I would throw it up. Jesus. But now, if Gene and I both say I owe three hundred thousand dollars on our uh, our house, and she had the money, and she went and paid it off, and then they said the bank said, "Well, we just going to account that you paid yours off too." You joined so close to Jean that when she paid hers off, it paid yours off. Well, that's what Jesus did. When he paid the debt, God accounts that you paid you. But the only thing about it is now you got to provide the faith. If you don't believe that your account is paid off. And that's the reason I can't. Folks say, well, you're you wrong. You're teaching them folks wrong. I can't when I sin. Run up to my Lord, forgive me. Lord, I can say I'm sorry. I can say, Lord, please help me not to do it no more. But I can't come up and say because I believe. The, Isaiah says that who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. I'm just telling y'all I'm in a good place because I believe God. It ain't got nothing to do with what's in the refrigerator now. It ain't got nothing to do with who like me and who don't like me. It's got to do with God. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? I have put all my trust in the word of God. The Bible said that faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. I believe God can help anybody that will just believe him. I just believe that, that, that your situation it's not so bad that if you'll just believe him. Huh. He said he quickened us together and made us to lie alive with Christ. By grace are you saved. In other words, it had nothing to do with your actions. It had nothing to do with uh, who, who you were supposed to be. He quickened us together. Now, that word quickened uh, in old English is life. Remember in, in Genesis 3, we lost life. The Spirit was animating us. The Spirit is what gave us the ability. We was body, soul, and spirit. And the Spirit uh, is intertwined so, so much that Hebrews, the fourth chapter says, only the Word of God is quick and powerful enough dividing asunder the soul and the Spirit because they are both invisible. How do you slice up invisible? It takes, it takes the word of God. And, and so we had a soul, but we had no more spirit. We were spiritually dead. But when we believed on Christ Jesus, then he quickened us or made us alive. And that's the reason that don't nobody have to tell you you saved. Because you know some things you used to didn't know. Now you're spiritually alive. And, you know, we got to run and get you and, and tell you, why don't you do this? And, and why don't you do it? You don't have to do that. Because now you are led by, the, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yeah. See, ain't nothing wrong with us at church. We're just doing too much. We're doing too much. We are taking over the work that the Spirit is supposed to be doing in each and every life, in every one of our lives. And my job is real easy, and that's to stay out of your way. Amen. Stay out of your way. Pastor, always coming up with what we need to do. We need to do this, and, and we need to do that. Like we need to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm <laughs> 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 and, 
and have raised us up together. When he got up, I got up. And let me tell y'all something. This kind of teaching right here is strength to me. This is what makes me a savage beast. This is what takes away fear of man. You see, the Bible said a fear of man brings a snare. And you see, man is always going to keep you up under his thumb. And he, let me just put it in Elaine vernacular. Always going to try to punk you down and, and make you aware. You see what I'm saying? That you don't even try. You ain't even trying to fight because you're scared. <laughs> if you scare a person bad enough, they're going to go lay on down. You ain't you put up no fight. And Paul said, that's not my story. Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. I fought the good fight of faith. I did, I'm holding to my faith. He raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Give me uh, uh, Galatians 2, please. Six forty-five, five minutes. Y'all staying five more minutes of me? Okay. Look what Paul says here. Um, then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem, about thirty-seven A.D. is when God took Paul hostage. God really helped me, Kathy, when He told me. He said, "I don't take volunteers; I take hostages." But we try to act like God won't volunteers. Won't you come and serve the Lord? Won't you come and serve him? He is so beautiful. He's wondrous and whatever. Not no Negro like me. Uh-uh. No. He says, and I went up by revelation and communed unto them. In other words, what he got, Paul says, this gospel that I got, didn't nobody teach it to me. But I received it by revelation. And that is, and, it, and, and see, the gospel is rooted in love. Because you see, when somebody loves you, Betty, it's not because of. They just love you. Oh, you see, I don't have to hide from God now. Because you see, God knew me before I ever got here. You see? And so all I have to do is surrender to God and let him lead me. You see, because as he told Paul, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. Every one of us got weakness. Ain't none of us just weak in every area. If it is, something wrong. Yeah, it's, a, it's, some, it's something that you ain't got no problem with paying no back. Nah, uh-uh. You know, that's something that you used to, but you're not. Uh, that's a, but it's something that still you're weak for. You see? But he, he says that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's when I'm the best. That's when I'm rolling in your life. That's when I come in, you see? And you see, when people love you, that's when the love is really displayed when you're really ugly, when you're really messed up. Let me see if I can put, bring it down to Marianne or De Deborah Campbell family. Uh, or just your family. Sometimes if we are in a family and we have siblings, we get agitated when our mama put more attention on the one that ain't doing so good. We're like, why don't you leave him? He ain't trying to do nothing. But you see, love rushes. I got Bible on it. Jesus told the Pharisees and all them church folks, he said, look, he says, the well don't need a physician. The well don't need a physician. I'm, I'm coming looking for that. The son of man come to seek and say that which is, which is lost. And the reason we don't understand God, and see, you must read the Bible through the eyes of love. I think last week I taught on the misunderstood God. You see, in the Old Testament, they misunderstood God because they did not see his chastening as love, but they saw it as him being a quid pro quo. If I scratch your back, you'll scratch mine. But God had to tell him, he said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell. What do I have need of? The gold is mine. The silver, the cattle of a thousand here belong to me. The very breath that's in your and they left him, Lady Deborah, and always want to run down to Egypt looking for help. He said, why would you trust in somebody who cannot even regulate their own breath? They told Jeremiah, Jeremiah spoke to him. He said, why you have left the fountain of living waters to go to cisterns that won't even hold water? You see, I have got to become convinced 
that won't nothing help me but God. And once I'm convinced of that, I quit going running to Egypt looking for help where it, there is no help there. I quit running to myself. <laughs> My time's up, but let me just say this right here. No, I ain't. Clap your hands for the Lord. Yeah. I'm through. <laughs> I don't know.